Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to Gaming It Out. Today I'm going to show you how to install a mod manager and install mods through the mod manager. It's a much easier way to access the mods and get them into the game and to keep them updated. Uh, recently there was an update that seems to have knocked a lot of the mods out of uh, out of contention, I guess, for working. So you'd have to go in and, and install all the mods that we've talked about over the last few videos. So we're going to install the mod manager today and then I'm going to show you how easy it is to find mods, install them, maintain them, edit their configuration files and all of those things if need to. Um, if, if, if you need to, I should say. Uh, so like the video, that helps me out a lot. Subscribe if you want to continue to see what I'm doing on this channel. And uh, other than that, let's go ahead and get into it. So if you click the link below to R2 Mod Man, that's the mod manager. So this is not so much a mod as much as it is a program that's going to help you manage your mods, right? So we're going to come down. We're going to click Manual Download. As we have before, we're going to... Drag this over to our desktop, wherever you want. You can access it through your downloads folder, however you want. I generally just drag things over because I have an extra monitor. Otherwise, you can you can just you could show all, and it would show your your downloads, anything like that. But uh, wherever you put it, you're then going to right click it and extract all, and it's going to pop this up. Basically, just making a new folder that gives you access to all of the things inside of it. So we're going to extract it. Once it's done. I'm going to open it up and pull it over so you can see it. Let me find it. One of the bad things about having so many things <laughs> on the desktop is that it gets really hard to find them. Here it is. We'll pull this back up and I'll drag this over. So there, now here's the extracted folder and you've got these things in here that aren't really particularly important, honestly. The big thing you want to be looking at is the application, the R2 Mod Man setup. That's what you're going to want to do. So we're going to open that up. If you get something like this, you can just hit more info and then it'll let you run anyway. You can run it anyway. It's it's not a big deal. Go to the prompts, let it do whatever it wants to do, wherever it wants to do it. And then when it's done, it'll give you the option to run it through the finished installation, basically. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll just open it up like this. We can get this folder out of the way now. Now, here we are. It's going to offer you game selection. So... We want to do Valheim, because that's what we're, what we're dealing with today. And it's going to run through a little bit of a process. And now we've got different profiles for different things, which is kind of cool. If you want to have some different profiles with different mods set up, this is a good way to do it. So for now, we will just, uh, we'll just do Select Profile and start from scratch. Now, a few things to note here. You've got Installed, and then you've got Online. Online is going to give you a list of all the mods that are available to you for Valheim through this. Uh, it's a ton of mods, obviously, 330, and it's probably going to continue to grow. Maybe by the time you see this video and do this, there will be even more. Uh, the first thing we're going to want to go ahead and do is install the Beppin. You do need Beppin, so we're going to download that. Download with dependencies is fine. And then now you'll see we have an ins uh, a mod listed in our installed area, right? So now Beppin is there and ready to go. So now any mod that's dependent on Beppin, we can just download and install. So you remember before we had to drag the, the, the folders over, extract them, do all of these different things. Now you can just find what you're looking for in the list and install it that way. So let's see, what, what are some that I like? I know that I like, uh, I know that I like equipment slots, equipment and quick slots. Uh, basically, anything Randy Knapp does, I'm a fan of. Uh, so we definitely want that one. I've talked about Randy Knapp in, in previous videos. Uh, I like the equipment wheel a lot. I think that one's really, really good. So we'll click it. We'll download with dependencies. Um, I, I use equipment and water for my creative worlds when I'm building. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, can we get Epic Loot from here? We can. Epic Loot is amazing. I did a video showcasing this one. I'll card to it now. Actually, let me let me check the timestamp so I know when to do that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll card to that now. It's uh, it's amazing. It changes the game drastically. I won't go too much into detail because again, I did a whole video showcasing specifically this mod. It's fantastic. I highly recommend it. There are a ton of other great mods. I'm not gonna j drop them all in now. I just wanted to get a few rolling so that we could go ahead and load up Valheim and you could see that the mods are going to be there. So up here, you notice you've got Start Modded, Start Vanilla. 
This is also really cool too. If you want to load the game up, game up with no mods, just start vanilla. There's a few things to consider if you're going to do this though. Certain mods like the uh, equipment and quick slots. What this one does is it gives you dedicated inventory slots for the gear that you're wearing and the three more hot keyable slots for potions or food or whatever, whatever you want to have. They're not... They're separate from your inventory. So if you're going to run vanilla on that character, you might want to hop in and move those things into your inventory or move them into a chest because when those slots get destroyed, those items don't have anywhere to go, right? So you may destroy the items with them. So just keep in mind that if you're going to run a vanilla game, you might want to hop into a game with your character and just make sure that anything that could potentially be damaged by that mod disappearing is taken care of because that's something important you know you, you don't want to lose your stuff so we'll go start modded and you may get this error this is this is good we can solve this problem here together error fail to start valheim valheim directory does not exist set the valheim directory in the settings screen so we'll click settings advanced options and we will go let's see let's find it change valheim directory and what we can do here, we've got Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Valheim. We're basically here. So we can select it there. So now that's our Valheim directory. Now if we go up and start modded, Valheim is launching via Steam. So there you go. If you have that problem, that's how you fix it. I did not do this, just to be clear, uh, preemptively. I wanted to do this for the first time together so that if we run into any issues, we can solve them here in the video because uh, sometimes people ask questions that I haven't encountered or had issues that I that I did encounter in my initial install. So I figured this would be a fun way or a better way maybe to, uh, to, you know, go through the process together. So now we're on the main screen. We've got Beppin EX six plugins loaded, F5 to open console. It looks like Beppin is good to go. Let's pick our character and we'll just load up a random, my random building game uh, with my old game where all my old mods were. Uh, but with, again, with the update that Valheim put out recently, a lot of the mods just stopped working. So uh, I figured I wanted to try the mod manager and we would, we, would, we would go through the process together. If everything's good, we should have, when we open our inventory, we should have the extra slots. We should be able to use the quick wheel. We may have to go in and edit the configuration file. Um, but you can see here, we've got, we have what we're supposed to have here, right? So... Uh, I did a video covering how to do dev commands since the update. It's it's a little bit different. If you haven't seen that and are interested, I will card to that as well in the top left. Um, let's go ahead and just turn on. There, now you're dead. Get off me. And we are good to go. So we have our mods in. Let's drop into the water real quick and see if we can use our gear we can we're in the water we've got our gear out so it looks like all of our mods are good to go and uh, again this is really handy because this this is a good way to keep your mods organized stay on top of them if there are updates needed uh, we can pull this back up you will in your in your installed there will be a little notification here that you need to update them so as the people who make the mods put out updates this will update in here it's much easier to stay on top of and maintain. Again, one-click installs versus having a manual manual download, extract, make sure everything's in the right directory. This thing runs through all those processes together for you. Uh, much easier to deal with. So hopefully this helps you guys. Okay, this will probably be followed by a weird cut, but I remembered that I said I was going to show you how to edit the configuration files for some of these mods and forgot to do that. So we're going to take a look at that real quick. Uh, I went and installed another mod, Crafting Station Range, because this is a good example of a mod that you might want to edit the configuration file on. We could have also done it with Equipment Wheel, um, but either way, either, either mod is a good example. Note that some mods won't have a configuration file until you install them and launch the game. Launch the game. I, you may have to load up a world too. I'm not sure, but I, I know that at least launch the game before it writes a configuration file. So if you install a mod and go go here and you don't see the mod that you're trying to edit, you might just need to launch the game once. Uh, that, that can be a bit of a headache if you don't know that already. So uh, we'll go with crafting station range. Here it is. Uh, so obviously config editor, find the mod you want to edit, 
edit config, it's going to open up a pretty user-friendly style of the file for you to edit that's harder to mess up. If you just open this up in Notepad, obviously you can edit it all. So if you take away a blank line or you, you know, there's, there's a few things you could do that could interfere. Here it's fairly easy, a little bit more straightforward. So the default value, for example, on crafting station range, which basically by default makes it infinite. So whereas you used to place a workbench and there was that circle of range around it that you had to be in to build, it just takes that away. And now if there's a workbench down anywhere, you can build. You don't have to be within a certain range of it. Zero is the default value and it's infinite. If you wanted to set it back to whatever, what it, what it is actually by default in the game, that would be 20. So like if you wanted to find that, that, that sweet spot uh, that works for you, maybe you're also using crafting with chests, right? So any chests that are within range of a workstation you can access those chests from your crafting station so you don't have to go hunt down the materials you need to make certain items, right? But you don't want to take from your friend's chest who's built, you know, I don't know, 500 yards away from you or something. So you you set your range bigger than what the default value would be at 20, but not so big that you also have access to their chests, right? Things like that. These are reasons you might want to come in and, and edit the configuration file. So you would, you would, you know, you might have to bounce in and out of the game a few times to find the value that works for you, but you would just make your edit, you would click save, you would load the game up, game up and test it out and see if it, if it did what you wanted it to do. Um, another example, we can go ahead and take a look at it while we're here. The equipment wheel, we'll go edit config, and you got all these different things here, uh, but... What you can do is find, where was it? Right here, the input for the hotkey, the default value is G. That means if you have installed the equipment wheel, holding G is what's gonna bring that wheel up. If you wanna change it to another key, if you don't like it being G, just come here and set it to whatever you would want it to be. Uh, you know, I don't necessarily recommend E because it's an action button, but find a key that works for you that's not being used by anything else in Valheim, set it, and then you're good to go. You can make it a mouse button, you know, whatever you want it to be. Uh, make sure you click save. And then again, when you, launch, when you launch the game, it will read the configuration file and make the necessary changes, uh, you know, to, to properly reflect the changes you've made, I guess is what we're trying to get at here. So that's it. That's it for the configuration file. If you have any questions, definitely feel free to drop them below. I will do my best to answer them for you. And, uh, and hopefully this makes your life a lot easier. And next time there's a big update that maybe makes some of the mods stop working, uh, when the people who made the mods update them, you know, again, you don't have to hunt them all down. And this kind of keeps everything much more organized than even we were before. So again, hope it helped. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And we'll see you in the next one.